you tell me your name, please? Ashley. And your age? 28. All right, and um, Ashley, can you just tell me about, like, what's going on with you, like, as far as, like, your addiction? Um. And how it started, at least? Let's see. Um, I started when I was 16. Um, I started with an ex-boyfriend. Um, I started sniffing. Then when I was like 18, I started shooting it. And I moved to Hartford with my mom. She lived um, out here for a while. And I've been in and out of jail almost every summer since I was like 18. Um, homeless. <laughs> Nowhere to live. I'm pregnant. <laughs> For the first time, don't know who father is. Um, I don't know how far along I am. <laughs> so, so like, what made you? What made you get into it? Was it something you was just trying? My parents were drug addicts, and I used to see um, when I was my boy, when I was my ex boyfriend, I used to see him and all his friends high. I always wondered like what, what was so great about it. And then one day, I, li I lived um, all the way out in Stafford Springs, which was pretty far, and I used to, I used to come out to Hartford with him. And one day when we were driving back, I used to, I asked to um, try it to sniff a little bit, and. At first he said, yeah, and then when he knew I was serious, he was like, no, I'm not going to give it to you. And then I begged him, and he gave me a little bit, and I, I started doing it every single day. And about after like a month, I was still in high school. And when I got out of school, um, I went to his house, and I felt like crap, and I thought, I was hoping I'd try to bug or something. And we went so hard to go get something, and as soon as I sniffed the bag, I felt better, and I realized I had a habit. So from there on, you never stopped since? Unless I go to jail. So when you go to jail, you don't think it. What makes you go right back to it when you come home though? Like since you, it's just. Like, um, I think it's pe people. Always, people say it's people, places, and things, which is definitely true. Cause I think it's every single time I come to Hartford. And even though know, no matter where you go, you can find drugs anywhere. You can get high anywhere, but it's um depends on the person. Like I said, my problem is coming back here. But it's like. People say like, yeah, I don't have to be out here. I can stay away. But it's like every time I get out of jail or, or um, rehab, say I want to come back that one day just to see people or say hi or thinking, I don't know, like, even though I know nothing's changed out here, I just have to come out here that one time. And as soon as I come out here, I get butterflies in my stomach and I just end up going to get high. Do you care about your life? Yeah, I'm, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of times that sometimes I just think in my head, I just want to do a whole bunch of bags and overdose, but I don't because my mom, but, I don't know, one that I, the reason I know I don't care is because I always want, I always want a baby, and now that I'm 29, I, well, I've never been pregnant, and I just found out Louie like a week ago, and um, I didn't think I could have kids because I never got pregnant. And I always said, I was like, if I ever got pregnant, I would stop using drugs. I could never sit here and put needles in my arm or smoke crack, knowing there's a baby in my stomach. And I, it's already been a week now. My boyfriend's been begging me to go to rehab. And it's like, yeah, I'm so happy. You know, like, I'm not happy how I got pregnant, but I'm so happy I'm having, like, I'm pregnant right now. But it's like, even for the baby, I'm not stopping. And it's like, it's, it's hard. I thought it would be a lot easier, but it's not easy. If I can't even stop for something that I always wanted, which was a baby, then it's hard to stop. I can do it, you know. Anyone can get clean. People want people. I know people that are 20 years clean, and I know people that are 20 years clean and relapse. But it's hard. So no, when you know people that's 20 years clean and stuff, does that motivate you though? Like when you see them, like. Yeah, I know. Um, I have a friend. He's actually my drug dealer. He um. He just got clean. He was in the hospital. He only he sniffed dope and smoked crack. And 
he went to the hospital for heart surgery and because he had a heart infection which i also have right now i have a heart infection i left the hospital and um he because of the heart surgery i guess he just decided not to go back he still sniffs though but he don't smoke crack or nothing he sells it now and, you know even just like two days ago i asked him he's been like he's over a year clean now and every so often i see him i ask him i'm like do you still get cravings to get high and he says no but everyone's different especially especially with somebody who's selling it you know it's hard that you know you get clean and then now you're selling the drug so it, like i said anyone anyone could get clean it's just hard you gotta want it no one can get you clean unless you want to be clean so at some point you think you're gonna try it though because i mean you want you want that baby you want that baby to survive right i went to the hospital yesterday and my boyfriend he even told me he was like um he was like, I'm so proud of you. He was like, you know, you don't have any drugs on you, nothing. You're still going to the hospital. And my plan was to go to the hospital. And hopefully they can put me in rehab or something. And I was sitting there. And um, they said they were going to take a urine on me. And um, I told them I had to go pee. And when the lady came back in, she was like, just wait two minutes. She was like, waiting for something. And I asked her what she was waiting for. And she said that they were waiting for security. And I said, and I asked why. They said it was just protocol. And I said, um, I was like, I was, I, ne I was, I never seen you guys have to have security come, like, like, like if nothing's even going on, if nothing happened, there's no reason why you have to call security. And um, I ended up finding out that they just because I was sitting in there, I was high. Before they brought me into a room, they just wanted to um, search me, make sure I had no drugs on me. But I freaked out immediately as soon as she said that they were gonna have security come in. I literally, I was like, I'm leaving. I bugged out. I started cussing them out. I told them, excuse my language, but I was like, go fuck your mother, this and that. And after when I left, I realized, I was like, wow, that was just an excuse to leave someone who got high. And I was so happy walking into the hospital, but I had no drugs or nothing. I just ended up leaving. So right now, like, what's your drug of choice? Um, fentanyl and cocaine. And, but you know with fentanyl, you know, you don't ever really know how much it is. Mm -hmm. Like how potent it is or anything. So that's the risk that you're taking every time. Mm -hmm. What is it that's so good about it that makes you want to take that risk? I guess just the rush, the high. You don't really think about things. And when I'm high, I'm not sitting there upset, crying. I'm not thinking about things. You ever smoke weed? Yeah, I smoked it a couple times and I don't like the feeling. But I didn't. My brother always tells me it's probably because I'm not used to smoking it, so when I smoke it, I get a stupid high, and then I only get feelings, so. It's like when I, um, like today, like when uh, the guy at the van, when he told me anytime I'm ready, you know, I can go in to rehab or detox, and I was sitting there thinking it in my head, and it's like every day I sit there and think like, yeah, all I gotta do is tell my mom go in and he'll call a detox, and I can go in right now, but all that's in my head is, Oh, I gotta have a couple bags before I go in. That's just an excuse, like, they're not gonna, but make sure I'm straight, like, yeah, there's been a couple times I went to detox and I was sick, but especially being pregnant, they're not gonna let me be sick. But say, it's always an excuse, like, I might have it in my head, I'm wanting to get clean, but I always make up an excuse not to. So, you, what'd you call it, the disease? Yep. Definitely. And you said your mom, your mom and dad used it too? Yeah, my dad passed away about like four years ago. He, um, my dad actually, he always said, he always told people he was dope he loves dope he never stopped getting high. When he died, he was a year clean. Wow. wow. And what about your mom? Is she clean now? You no, know, she's actually in a nursing home. She's actually supposed to be getting out today. She, um, she has really bad heart problems right now. And she used to be in, she used to do cocaine a lot. Heavy, heavy, heavy. But um, she ended up in the hospital because she ended up taking a pill. She thought it was um, a sleeping pill to make her come down from the coke, and it wasn't. It was it made her. It was a pill that didn't go good with the coke, I guess. She ended up in the hospital, and it was that she won't touch coke, but she still does fentanyl. Um, so. So out here right now, is that pretty much all that there is out here is fentanyl? Yep. Like, even in the cocaine, like, is it? Yeah, even in the crack, there's fentanyl. Mm -hmm. A couple times I smoked crack, and 
I remember I was like I was I was in my friend's car one day and I kept I kept smoking. I remember I clicked my eyes open. I was really like like he I ended up getting out of the car. I remember I really like woke up on the sidewalk. Um, does bad things happen to you being out here in the streets like it's funny? Um yeah. Um the twelve years I've been out here I always I one thing I always said is I'll never go around telling people I've been raped even if I didn't because there's so many girls out here that sit there and say they've been raped this and that and half of the time it's not even true. Like a lot of people like attention. But like I said, the twelve years I've been out here, I've had like stuff happen here and there, but nothing really big. But about like eight months ago I got raped in the ass for forty five minutes by some guy. And then about like two months after that, some guy tried to um rape me at gunpoint and I bit him. I bit his, you know. And um he pistol with me in the back of the head three times and I ended up getting away. But um yeah. You know, I always say it's my fault, you know, because I'm the one out here prostituting. I'm the one that's taking that chance. And what I do, 10 minutes after I got pissed with that blood all over me, what I do, go right back out and try to hop in the car again. So, what, what, what were you, was he supposed to be a customer? Yeah. And then he turned around and raped you instead? Yep. And never paid you? And... Yep. People always ask, they're like, if you're a prostitute, how, do you, how can you get raped? It's easy, like, when I got in the car, like the guy that raped me, um, we pulled over somewhere and I asked him for the money. And he said that he had to go to the ATM and I told him, I was like, well, no, I was I need the money now. And I went to go get out of the car and um, when I was about to get out, he grabbed me by my neck and started choking me. And he told me straight out, like, he told me like he was having a conversation with me, he was like, I'm going to rape you, this and that. And my worst fear has always been getting raped in the ass. That is my, my worst fear. Because somebody, like, that's trying to sound weird, but somebody who does not like the ass at all, Where was this? This is in Hartford? Park Street. This is, so this is in the car on Park Street? And the guy that um, pistol with me, about a week later, um, two houses down from my boyfriend's brother's house. And my boyfriend's brother has cameras on the house. And at 10 o'clock at night, there was um, on the camera, there was a guy that pulled into the driveway. And it was the same car, same guy, the one that tried to rape me, the one that I bit. He, um, he pulled into the driveway and got out went behind it to be in the house. The only where I hung out at, like everyone thought it was me, but it wasn't. Um, he went back and shot a girl and she just had a baby too and killed her and I guess it was supposed to be for me because I bit him. But, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So like, what kind of guy was this? Honestly, he seemed fine. It's like every time I've had any kind of little issue with a guy or anything, like they were nice as hell. Like I, I didn't have no issues with them. And I was like, I don't know, like why, why we were driving. I was like, I was at like after we, after things happened. That's all I thought was wow. Like this guy was actually really nice. Like, like I would not expect him to do something like that. But was it like a Spanish guy, a white guy, a black guy? Um, both are Spanish. Mm. you know I put myself in this and I'm you know no one deserves to get raped no matter what but still I'm I you know I'm the one that's out here I'm the one that puts myself in this situation I don't have to be out here